It's one of our most popular segments, Sandlot to the Show. Yes, let's go. Get that glove in there as you're throwing and keep it in. Try to get a little bit more of an angle this way. Yeah, yeah that's like what that. I'm liking we right now. Be on the backside, and you can still do the drill. Start throwing 95, might get a little shoulder sore. This is just awesome. Block a dog. Stop that off. back flip, go. I love Sandlot to the Show. Left-handers just look so smooth. Wow, that's pretty good. He's got a little Marcus Stroman in him. And I like this one right here. Boom. Some things you're naturally <laughs> gifted with. That's great work right there. Good stuff. Oh, I am so excited for this. Hello and welcome to our Sandlot to the Show live stream with USA Softball. I'm Alexa Dat, and for about the next half hour, hour or so, we're going to have four USA Softball players. And what perfect time to do it then with the Olympics coming up this summer, this is the time to reach out to these athletes. Some of the greatest athletes in their sport join us to break down your videos and answer your questions about the game that you love the most. Or if you're a parent, your daughter's game. You guys have sent us in videos. We are going to break those down here on our live stream, and we cannot wait. We are coming to you live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and MLB.com. So many ways to enjoy this incredible experience, and it's a great way for these top athletes who have incredible resumes in their sport to connect with young players and give their softball tips. All right, so without further ado, the USA athletes that will be joining us today will be Kat Osterman, Aubrey Monroe, Hannah Flippin, and Janie Reed. This live stream, remember, this is for you guys. This is for the viewers. So while you're watching, make sure you comment in the stream with your questions or anything that you'd like to say if you want to give a shout out. And we're going to have our athletes answer your questions. So let's get started with talking some pitching, catching, and hitting. I played softball, so for me, this is a dream come true. I'm so humbled and honored to be here with you guys today. Our first guest, a longtime pitcher for Team USA, an Olympic gold medalist in 2004. She won silver in 2008, a two-time world champion, and yes, it's her birthday today, Kat Osterman joining the show. What's up, Kat? Hi, thanks for having me. Just Thanks for being here. Downtime at training camp, so love, love being able to join you guys. First of all, it's your birthday, so happy birthday, and how did you guys celebrate today? Uh, we were six in scrimmage this morning. Um, but was complete with happy birthday um, serenade by Val Arioto. And then uh, we had um, ice, cream cake, ice cream cake and, of course, everyone saying happy birthday there at lunch. So uh, definitely with a group that makes me feel very loved. I feel like because you've dedicated so much of your life to softball, your birthday and the game have been intertwined your whole life. Yeah, you know, when you're a spring baby and you love a spring sport, um, you usually spend your birthday around around that sport. So I've spent so many of them at the softball field in 2004. We The team was over in Italy. 2005, we were somewhere on tour. So I don't know that I've been home and able to celebrate my birthday with my family very often. But um, being with your team always makes makes it that much better, too, because they are your extended family. Yeah, your adopted family, for sure. And what an amazing way to intertwine the sport that you love with the day that celebrates you. That's really cool. All right, yeah. our next guest, a catcher from California, a two-time world champ and Pan American gold medalist in 2019, Aubrey Monroe is hopping in. What's up, Aubrey? Hey. Thanks for being here. How's it going? How's training camp? How you feeling? Really good. Yeah, we're having a great time. It's always good to be together. Um, anytime that we get to work out together and just train and it just gets more and more real the closer we get and being together all the time. I read in your Twitter bio that you love binge watching Netflix. Anything that you've watched recently that you can share with us? <laughs> yeah. Well, New Girl is always a go-to. It's like a safe go-to. I've probably watched it several, I don't know, probably close to seven. Good. Have on whenever. <laughs> I love it. Not too much downtime right now, but when you do get that downtime, you're able to flip over there. That's awesome. All right. Hey, reminder to everyone watching us here on the live stream. If you have any questions for Kat and Aubrey, drop them in the comments below and we will get to all of those questions. And we have tons of videos to get to. So let's go ahead and start. Kat, we're going to start with you. We've got Grace up first. She's a middle school pitcher from Georgia. And the cool thing is here, she worked out with the Auburn School of Kinesiology at their sports medicine and movement lab to check out her skeletal structure while she's pitching. Yeah, I've actually gotten to throw in this lab. So it's really cool that she got to do this at such a young age and learn what her body's doing as she's throwing. And I think you see here, the best thing she does is her leg drive is really strong through. Um, the one thing I think I'd point out is with that leg drive, that front side kind of stiffens a little bit, which you see her get up on her toe. If you stay down in your legs a little bit more, you get more power. But 
overall, one, a cool thing to be dedicated enough to go get your skeletal sequencing looked at, but um, pretty good mechanics and got some good leg drive. I'm assuming she's probably throwing the ball a decent speed. So it's very cool to see. How awesome is it with all of the advanced technology that we have nowadays that we're able at a young age to go do something like this? Because when I played softball, there there weren't these medicine and, and sports kinesiology labs around. Yeah, no, there weren't. And um, to be honest, you know, I wasn't able to do that kind of stuff either growing up. And so now it's fun to get on mach different machines or different things that are, are measuring whatever and figuring out, okay, this is what I do. At what age did I figure this out? And now younger kids can kind of do those things and try to have measurements, like if they get to see my measurements, to so try to mimic or replicate as much as possible. And, you know, Aubrey, when you take a look at a pitcher, obviously from a catcher's perspective, you see something different. So what do you see when you look at this video? Yeah, I think same as Kat, like her leg drive, she just looks really strong. And I think that's something um, for pitchers. Everyone has a different build. Everyone kind of has a different style. I mean, Kat being what, you're like 6'2 or something? <laughs> like, yeah. Kat being 6'2, she has a different type of look, but she still looks very strong. Um, and so she uses her levers differently. But you can tell that Grace is being explosive off the mound and really trying to get everything she can into that pitch. So you don't have to worry about her um, being careful, I think. I think that's something that we see a lot with young kids and, and the girls that want to just go out and not necessarily throwing hard, high velocity, if that's not your style, but like really getting the most out of your body when you throw. Yeah, that's important. We love that. All right, Aubrey, for you, we're going to start with a fellow catcher. This is 10-year-old Lila showing off her blocking ability. Shout out to Bakersfield Pride. That's the team she catches for. Look at this. This is so cute. She's a stud. I love this video. Just look at her. And I love this progression. I think it's really important, especially with younger kids or really anybody that's getting into catching and learning how to block because human nature, like what other time in our life are we like, yeah, it just hit me. It's fine. Like normally it's human nature to want to get out of the way. <laughs> so as many reps that you can get, um, it's so important to just get used to a ball coming at you and getting used to trusting your gear and what that feels like is so important. Um, and I just love that Lila, she's just working her way up. I love starting on your knees like that, getting used to it a little bit and then getting up to then flipping down on your knees. Um, one thing I would say is, um, so she starts here with her elbow out and that just can get you kind of stuck. I would suggest to Lila to maybe bring her elbow down a little bit, not to an uncom uncomfortable position, um, but being able to just flip here instead of being stuck then coming around. I think that's really my only tip, but Lila seems like a stud. She is getting all her work in. I love it so much because blocking is really hard, uh, mostly mentally, but the most, the more you can see a lot of reps like that balls coming at you, um, the better. What took the longest for you to really nail down for you to become a professional while you were going through your progressions? Yeah, as a kid, I would say it was blocking. Like it was, you know, I could do it in practice when I knew the rep was coming, but it was this transition from doing it in practice when I know I'm doing a drill to doing it in a game, like reading it off the pitcher. Um, and that's the number one thing I get from parents and coaches. They're like, oh, she blocks. She knows how to do it. She looks great in practice, but she's not doing it in a game. And I'm like, yeah, because it's up here. And I think the thing that uh, you have to anticipate, so like I tell a lot of catchers, change ups and drop balls. You know, those are the pitches that you know are probably going to be more down, especially when you're younger. Your pitchers are learning those pitches too. Like they're not going to be perfect, but they'll throw it with more confidence if they know that you can block it well. And so it's this kind of cycle of if I can block it well, I know you'll throw, you might throw better and then you'll feel good even if you do miss that your catcher is going to have your back. And so I think um, it really comes down to wanting to keep the ball in front more than you're a little worried about getting hurt. And once you can kind of flip that switch, that's when you get, um, that's when you kind of get over that hump. Yeah. That's great advice. This is our live stream of Sandlot to the show, our USA softball edition. And we have people watching live from all over the country commenting below for Kat and Aubrey. This one, Aubrey, um, uh, says, what's it like catching Cat? It's That's been really fun actually getting to progress with Cat. You know, like when she came back in 2019 and like her process, just even coming back, because it was a big deal for her to come back to Team USA. And like we've worked really, really hard to get to know each other better and to like, okay, how can I help you? What do you need from me? We've gotten to a really cool place actually. And I think that 
the the work in getting to know each other has made it even more fun. And honestly, it's just really fun to catch pitchers that one hit their spots, but two can make the ball do some crazy stuff. You can get really creative with pitch calling. And as the battery, it's really, really fun when you make hitters look stupid. So that's kind of the goal sometimes. And when I have pitchers like Kat, I'm, we're able to do that a lot. Battery mates for life. I love that. You guys work so well together. It's very impressive to watch. All right. Our next video, this uh, is a picture for you, Kat. Here's Mia. Mia Tortilla on Instagram. She's rocking number 21. Yeah, Mia's a little thing, but man, she's fire. she fires it in there. And you see her aggressive with her windup, which gets her some speed because she is a little bit smaller in stature. But you see her really drive out there with her front leg. So she's really trying to get length out there to get herself moving. Um, I think if there's only one thing I would point out is she kind of goes across her body when she snaps. So it goes across her hips instead of straight towards the catcher, which you see the ball go outside a lot. But still, I really love the aggressiveness, especially with her um, pre-motion, getting herself moving and her momentum. So I think uh, she looks like she's a feisty one. So I'm going to guess there's going to be a lot of a lot of long battles with hitters and some uh, passion flying out of her the older she gets. That's incredible. Aubrey, if you're catching her, what would you what would you say? I think they're kind of in line with what Kat's talking about with her hand coming up. I'd say her stride might be a little off to the side and it kind of helps because that turf mat has a line. So you can see she's striding a little wide that sometimes with pitchers, if they're not where they're wanting to land and sometimes that they like being on the side for certain pitchers and things like that. But um, that usually sets up their hips. They then can set up how, how they're getting their arm through. Great. I love these. By the way, keep sending your videos in hashtag Sandlot to the show and tag MLB Network so we are able to see them. And drop your questions below. Both Kat and Aubrey are anxious to answer any questions you have about your game or whether your daughter plays a sport. We'll answer any and all questions live here on our stream. All right, Aubrey, next up, let's take a look at a hitter. Here's Devea, 10 years old out of the Bay Area. Devea, she can hit. She can, she can crush this ball. <laughs> First of all, I love that she gets going with a bunt. I think it's yeah. important. I'm a big, big advocate for the bunt um, and just being able to have that in your toolbox. But I just really love how she's just locked in. I think one thing, she looks a little angled, and that might be by design or by with her coach, and that's that can work for some people, but maybe sometimes might cut her off from the in, inner half. Um, but I just really love that she's swinging hard. That bunt looks great. I love it. She does a lot of balancing drills too. I've seen her on Instagram. That she works, you know, shifting her weight is really important too. Um, mm -hmm. She's got great hands. It's it's incredible to watch. Yeah, that first pitch after the bunt was a little bit elevated, a little higher, and she did such a great job of like getting her hands up there, like level with it to hit a line drive. It was awesome. All right, Kat, we get to see a pitcher next with some slow-mo help here because that's always good to be able to break down how this pitcher, um, the wind-up and how the entire motion works out. Here's AJ. So, yeah, total slow-mo from AJ here. So, yeah, we get a nice side view. You see her drive out. My only thing is, so I talked about um, on the first video with Grace that she stiffens her front leg. And we almost bend our front leg a little bit too much here where you see her sit into her back legs and kind of fall backwards. We always want to make sure as we're throwing, we're trying to keep our power going towards the plate. Um, so she has power going as she drives out like that because she, you see her back leg driving on the line. She's got a good stride. Just would like to see her be able to keep a little bit stronger front side so she can be more straight up and down as she's resisting as she whips through. Um, but overall, I mean, that slow-mo helps, but that's a great position if she just stays stronger with her legs a little bit. Kat, for all the young girls out there, what's AJ working with right now? What, what kind of a mat is she using that maybe they can use to help improve their pitching? I haven't actually seen this mat. So um, it looks like the red line is your power line, which is lining up to the middle of the plate. And then it looks like to me the yellow lines that you see, um, it's labeled on there, but the yellow lines would kind of be the areas you want to aim to stay inside of if you were going inside and outside. Um, if you get outside of those yellow lines, in my opinion, you're getting almost outside of the mound um, and you don't want to be that far over. So I'm guessing someone designed this because I haven't seen this one, but there's quite a few mats. We saw it in um, Mia's video that have just the straight white line that shows you, okay, this is my power line. This is going towards the middle of the plate. And then you try to work on stepping over or off center of that a little bit, depending on what side of the plate you're throwing to or what pitch you're throwing to. So but this is a cool mat that designs to where 
you could probably get it down to even a little more specific for kids to see, okay, am I stepping in zone A, zone yellow, whatever it is. Are there other tools out there that you would recommend? Yeah, or advice that you would give specifically to a left-handed catcher? Because uh, that's pretty interesting, Aubrey, right? You've got a southpaw uh, and that's a totally different angle. Yeah, I way. think it's um, actually, when I was a student coach at Florida, the catcher after me was lefty and it was so interesting working with her because so many things that I would just do naturally that's really just being glove side would set me up, like getting creative with how she can be most efficient. Um, I actually talked to a former Olympian, Jenny Topping about it. And she was like, buns are built for ke for left-handed catchers. Like, no, they're not. But <laughs> that, that tough butt down the line, the uh, third baseline is totally built for a lefty catcher. So there's some strength to being a lefty catcher. I think um, it's mostly just about, again, learning to utilize your body, how you were made. You can be just as quick. Like there's no um, benefit to being a righty catcher versus a lefty catcher. I think just maximizing your body and just – Bottom line is you have to give your pitchers a good target. You have to give them a good look that is comfortable and make sure that you can move. And I think the biggest difference is like plays at the plate. You just, you turn a different way. It's a little bit more, honestly, it's instead of just being, I don't know, a little bit more like a, like a bulldog, just like blocking the plate, you actually end up being a little bit more athletic because you have to turn across your body to make that tag. I think that was the biggest difference that I saw for lefty catchers. But um, that's the cool part. I think about our game is that you're seeing more lefties, um, seeing a lot more lefty pitchers, probably a lot because they see Cat out there. Um, and I've seen a lot more lefty catchers over the last few years, and it's been fun. Yeah, I'm a Southpaw, so that creativity just flows when you play when you play yes. ball. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you, you can tell. Have to be it's creative because mostly righties out there teaching. You guys kind of make it up as you go, and you guys just <laughs> be athletic. It's different. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, Aubrey. Here's a high school hitter from California. Let's check out Haley from Lincoln. Yeah, when I saw this video, I really liked how you'll see that she takes everything through the middle. Her goal is just working through the middle. I think that's really great. It's a great approach um, when you're getting loose in the cage in general and just trying to keep things easy, um, just trying to power the ball through the middle of the field because then you can make adjustments from there. Uh, she gets down early with her stride, uh, which is all good. I think the biggest thing is getting your foot down like so that you have something to hit against and that you have a strong lower body. And getting down early is great because she does such a great job of not getting down and drifting through her swing. She gets down, keeps her way back, and is able to drive everything back up the middle. Um, and her hands just, oh, they're so good. They just work right through the ball. It's so impressive to watch all of these youngsters send these videos in. All right, we got another comment. People are watching all across different platforms here on our live stream. Sal says, how do you generate power from your swing and not have it be all in your arms? That's a great question. It is a great question, especially for someone like me who's so lanky and I got to try and get everything I can from my legs. Um, mm -hmm. I think just learning how to feel my legs was a big part of my process. And that might sound kind of weird, but just learning how to engage my legs. And that doesn't necessarily mean getting really low because uh, for all the kids out there or parents that have kind of lankier kids, um, it's not about getting lower. That's not necessarily going to put you in the most athletic position or honestly being tall and having those long levers, like Kat can attest to that too. Like it can be one of your biggest strengths. So learning to use that while not getting so army, I think it's about setting yourself up for a good path to the ball with your hands. Um, Cause even when I'm in my legs, I can get kind of arming with my swing. Um, so just really feeling your legs, making sure that you're in a stacked position and just feeling strong. Ladies, this was so fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm honored to be able to be here with both of you. Uh, the fact that you guys are down in training camp and took the time out, not only to watch these videos, but to hop on the live stream with us. It, it really is an honor. Uh, Kat, happy birthday again. Aubrey, what'd you get Kat for your birthday? Strikeouts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, ladies, appreciate it. And we can't wait to see you this summer in the Olympics. Thank you. Sir. All right. As we continue our live stream here, we got two more superstars joining Sandlot to the show from USA Softball. We're going to go ahead and introduce our next guests. This next guest hails from San Diego, California, played collegiately at Utah. She was a Pan American Championship gold medalist in 2017 and is an infielder for USA Softball. Here is Hannah Flippin. Hannah, what's up, Hannah? Hi, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, they call you Flip. Can we call you Flip? Is that cool? That sounds good to me. Just not in Utah, right? Just not in Utah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. And our final. Mind, so. Yeah, that's what they say. Our final guest comes from California. She played at Oregon, has been a Pan American Games gold medalist and two time world champion with U.S. softball. Welcome, Janie Reed. Hi. What's up, Janie? Hi. Me. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank you very much. It's like birthday central over there. With I know, it really right, is. Huh? We have a lot of April birthdays. <laughs> How'd you guys celebrate your birthday? Um, my teammates got me some cake. I'm actually looking at some streamers and balloons that some of my friends hung up. So it was very special. Well, we are so honored for both of you to be here on the stream. Anyone out there watching, whether you're a softball player or your daughter plays softball or your niece, whoever you have in your family that plays softball or you just love the sport, this is so great for us to be able to have these two athletes here. Drop any comments that you have for our guests and we will answer them as we work through these videos. But one of our favorite parts is breaking down these videos and having you guys comment and just be able to share your love of the game because that's what this is all about. So. Let's start off, Hannah, with 15-year-old Madison from Ohio. She plays travel ball with the Ohio Outlaws. I love that name. Okay, so <laughs> Madison is taking some hacks here, which I love. Um, and they look consistent, too, which is a huge thing in hitting. We're always trying to find a way to be consistent. Um, if I were to pick apart one thing from her swing, it's just that she looks like she's hanging back a little bit on that backside. Um, we want to generate all that power and push it through the middle of the field, um, obviously without being over our front leg, but just finding that center of balance. But I love the hack that Madison takes on every swing. Hannah, what's the number one question that you get from parents or even from young athletes about hitting? I think the number one question is, how do I get my kids to hit the ball harder? Um, and I mean, Madison does that. She has bat speed, which is so important in swinging um, at Younger ages, we try and teach the mechanics of swinging instead of just letting the kids swing as hard as they can. Um, we're trying to teach them the mechanics and that slows them down. And when they get older, they never learn how to speed back up again. So I think at a young age, just learning how to swing hard um, is the best thing to do as we're learning the game of softball. And there are any tools, tricks, skills, drills that you would recommend in order to improve on that? I would say I personally like to use the heavy bat. So you get a bat a little bit heavier than what you normally swing. And you just try and swing that as hard as you can. And obviously try and maintain control as you're swinging, but continuing um, to use different tools. And um, so I like the heavy bat. So Sal commented here, do you have any hitting drills my daughter can do at home? So a uh, heavy bat's one of them, like you mentioned, anything else? When I was growing up, I would stand in front of a full length mirror and watch myself and kind of see what my body's doing and what it looks like. Because sometimes we think we're doing one thing, but when we actually look at ourselves, we're doing a completely different thing. So I think taking slow motion swings while looking in a mirror is something that you can do at home without needing any equipment or anything. Um, another thing I would say is just hitting wiffle balls. I know it's hard to hit softballs in your backyard, so taking some wiffle balls and just always finding a bat in your hand, always playing with a ball um, and taking your hacks. Yeah, we take hacks in Studio 42 with wiffle balls. We <laughs> love doing that. And then in every profession, right, they recommend whatever you have to do, whether you're a presenter or even a broadcaster using a mirror. It's so important to be able to see yourself doing what you know you ultimately want to do and to be able to achieve your goals. I love that. All right, Janie, here's Michaela. She's a right-handed hitter. She plays for the Westwood Red Hawks. She's both a pitcher and a first baseman, but here's her in the cage. Awesome. I love um, the hacks that she's taking in the cage. Um, I like her turn. She's really using her hips um, to get the barrel to the ball. I would say that maybe the only thing is just to remember that our stride is to help us get rhythm. So and start speeding up. Um, and our stride starts to become quicker and quicker. I know that I do this sometimes. So just remember to take it slow, find your rhythm every single pitch, and keep swinging that bat. Janie, what did you find was the most difficult part for you in your progression to where you started as a hitter and where you are now? Yeah, I would say I would say timing um, has been something that I've had to learn. And luckily, I'm fast. So if I get jammed and hit a ball to the shortstop, um, it can still be a hit for me. But I think um, finding my own rhythm, I grew up um, hitting a lot off the tee. And so um, a big thing for me um, in college was just facing a lot of BP and a lot of live and figuring out how to find my own rhythm in the box. 
And training for the Olympics, I mean, that is to be so intense right now. You guys are doing two a days. How often are you hitting in a cage when you have the Olympics coming up uh, this summer? Yeah, well, I, I love when we're at a facility where we can go into the cage whenever we want. Yesterday, got done with shuttles and I just, you know, wasn't feeling my BP. And so went into the cage for an hour just to slow it down and go at my own pace and, and feel it out. So I really like the tea. I really like the cage. Um, just because I, I'm a thinker and so I'd rather get all my thinking out in in my you know in my own environment so that way when I get on the field we're scrimmaging or we're hitting BP I can just let my athleticism take over. And Hannah how about you? I try and get in the cage similar to Janie. Janie is definitely a thinker and a worker where I like to just feel good um, so on days like today where we went hard on a scrimmage in the morning, I'm really excited for our afternoon BP session because you kind of just get to feel good and get that good feeling back before our next scrimmage. All right. We got another comment here. This one is for Janie. Is there a difference between getting a ball relayed to a cutoff compared to throwing a ball all the way to a base? Great question. That is a great question. I think um, most of the time I want to make my throws cuttable and um, – but most of the time also we our cuts, our middles are usually in line with that base. And so I want to give them the option to where my throw could go all the way to the base, but they could also cut it if they if they need to. Love that answer. All right. And we can't forget about fielding defense wins championships, as they say. Hannah, uh, we're going to check out Olivia here. She's a third baseman and this is perfect. Her last name's Glover. So it just it works out so well. What do you see I from mean, Olivia? Glover, what a last name. She must have said <laughs> that at third base. But I love that she's taking the time to make to take intentional reps in between innings because during a game you might not get the reps and you never know who's watching if you're trying to get recruited or whatever it is. Um, and if you're trying to get better taking those reps seriously is important and it matters. Um, I would say one critique that I have is just to get lower sooner. Um, she kind of plops down right as the ground ball is getting there and we want to make it as smooth as possible so that we can transition into the throw and into first base and um, be able to read a ground ball and read the hop a little bit better. When we sink down really fast, um, we have a tendency to maybe get a bad hop or kind of our eyes are bouncing up and down. So staying smooth and through the ball. Janie, how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, I haven't played the infield since I was 11. So um, all props to anybody that can field a ground ball that close <laughs> to the batter. But whatever, whatever Flip said, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> Janie's used to robbing home runs out there. We've seen a couple of those. So when you guys were growing up and learning to become these professional softball players that you are now, and I hear this from parents all the time, did you play multiple sports? Were you involved in different other activities besides just softball? And how did that help your game today? Um, in high school, I played three sports. And I should say, all growing up, I was always playing multiple sports. And, and I heard you got into racquetball at some point, too. I was playing racquetball when I was coach <laughs> at the University of Utah, playing Coach A and Coach C. It was so much fun, but it just challenged, like, your change of direction and versatility and stuff like that. So I'm a big advocate of playing multiple sports because it brings out different kinds of skills. Um, in high school, I played volleyball, basketball, and softball, but I also played soccer and flag football and roller hockey and baseball. So I've done it all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I was a big recess gal. Unfortunately, I, I kind of stuck with softball, you know, all growing up. Um, I tried soccer for a couple years, did not like how much running that involved. Um, but now, even as even in my pro career, my husband was a three sport athlete, just like flip. And so, um, you know, just starting to even play sports later, um, I can totally tell how it just makes you more ath athletic all around. And so I'm always a proponent when people ask me, I say play play all the sports that you love. Also, I think it's really cool to look forward to the next season. Um, growing up in Southern California, I played softball all year. So it was like I had like two weeks off and then it was like, oh, softball again. So I think it's cool when kids can look forward to the next sport and, and that can kind of stay fresh. And I think love similar, that. Great advice. Similar to that, you get a different coach every season. And so you're trying to learn and respect somebody new every season and um, kind of figure out different coaching strategies and maybe what works for you or what doesn't work for you or what um, just seeing a different person being in charge, I think is important too. 
Yeah, that's a great life skill. I totally agree. Man, such great insight from you guys here on our live stream, Sandlot to the show, USA Softball Edition. We are having an absolute blast. Um, next up, Janie, this is Peyton. She is at the plate and she is a triple threat. I mean, this girl can do it all. Oh, I love this. It brings back memories. The reason why I switched over to the left side because I just wanted to be on base and it looks like she just loves to tap that ball and run and um, I think she looks great. I love the way that she, you can tell she has conviction on each skill that she's doing If she's bunting, slapping or hitting. And so I love that. If anything, I would just say, keep working that back control. Um, and I love that she's already hitting away because as you can see, she could drop a bunt or a slap every time if she wanted. And so, um, that was something that my dad was really passionate about with me too, is if you're going to switch over to the left side, like you're going to be able to hit away if there's runners in scoring position, um, drop a bunt, slap whenever you need to. So I just, I love all of these videos and I'm cheering for you, Peyton. I feel like drag butting is such an underrated skill. And I'm not just saying that because it was my specialty because I'm a Southpaw, but <laughs> it, uh, it really is. It's incredible. And it's a great way for, you know, younger girls, especially who might not have the power in order to hit it, you know, uh, to crush the ball, to get involved in the game, to drive in runs. It, it really is. It's a, it's a way to be more versatile. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We love that. All right, Peyton, we're rooting for you. All right, Flip, we got Brooklyn for you working off the tee here. Oh, my goodness. Is this not the most adorable <laughs> thing you've ever seen? Brooklyn is so cute. Brooklyn is so cute, and she's a stud. I mean, it looks like she's in her living room taking some hacks. So if you're <laughs> dedicated to the game like Brooklyn, then you better start. Um, so I love that she's getting her work in wherever it needs to be. Um, love the slow-mo swing. Love the power to the ball. The only thing I would say is, work on that extension and that finish. When I learned how to get extended through a ball, that's when I became the power hitter. Um, I was the righty uh, South Paul triple threat um, because I like to bunt because I couldn't get the ball far enough to be a double or a home run. So I learned how to bunt and later developed the power skill by learning how to get extended through the ball. That's so important. Yeah, you love that. I just love her just like rocking her socks on her carpet <laughs> in her basement. She's like, I don't need gear. Like I'm just, I'm here in my sweatshirt and I'm just crushing this ball. Whatever it takes to get better. We love that. All right, Janie, last video for us. We've got Emma and Emma is showing some power. This girl crushes this ball and you can't see the end result necessarily in the video, but I'm gonna let you know, this was a double that bounced off the fence in center field. Oh my gosh. She mashes that ball. I mean, <laughs> What what could you possibly critique about this video? I think I love that, you know, the pitcher kind of has a quicker rhythm and I love that she just stays in her calm rhythm and stays through that ball and really gets extended like um, Hannah was just talking about. And so, yeah, nothing to critique here. Keep doing what you're doing. Janie, if you were out in the outfield, would you have caught that? I mean, I, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm just I mean, it's a freaking bomb, but... Uh, I'd like to think maybe I, maybe I would have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Emma, thanks so much for sharing that video. That was awesome. Uh, Janie and Hannah, we really appreciate you joining us, especially taking out uh, time out of your training schedule to be here with us on our live stream for Sandlots to the show. This is so much fun, a great way to grow the game, especially for the young girls in the sport. They look up to you. They idolize you. They can't wait to see you this summer. So we really appreciate you guys hopping on. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. Thank Thanks you. For Thanks us. for having us. All right, everyone, remind to post. Want to remind you to post your videos on Twitter and Instagram using hashtag Sandlot to the show and tag MLB Network. But we cannot let you go without reminding you about our skills competition. MLB Pitch, Hit, and Run presented by MLB Network is the official skills competition of Major League Baseball. This is so cool. So this competition is free to host and participate in. Pitch, Hit, and Run has both a baseball and softball division, and it's open to competitors 14 and under. And remember, back in 2019, six of the softball finalists were USA softball players. So they go on to do big things. Any team or league can host a free event for their players this summer. If you want to learn more and you want to register to host a local free event for yourself, one of these competitions, go to pitchhitrun.com. This has been an incredible experience for me. Thank you to Kat, Aubrey, Hannah, Janie. Happy birthday. Uh, and thank you so much to USA Softball and to all of our viewers. This is why we do the show. We do it for you to be able to connect 
with some of the greats in the game and to be able to grow the game that we love so much. So thank you so much for joining our live stream, whether it was on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or MLB.com. We hope that you enjoyed it just as much as we did. And we see you soon. We'll see you on the next episode of Sandlot to the Show. Take care. Want to break down that swing? Work on that windup? Be a better player? Get in on MLB Network's Sandlot to the Show. It's a chance to have your mechanics analyzed by MLB Network's former big leaguers. Play second base, use this kind of as a steering wheel. Boom! Have your parent or guardian post videos of you in action on Twitter and Instagram with hashtag Sandlot to the Show and tag MLB Network. Look at that. Sit through the ball, drive it.